Righteousness. What is righteousness? Now, if you go and read the Bible, you will see that there are different forms of righteousness. Even if you look at the great, you know, the father of the faith, um, uh, uh, Abraham. The Bible says, and Abraham was, you know, he believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And uh, so many times we think that the righteousness that Abraham had, uh, you know, in, uh, um, in his day and time is the very same righteousness that we have today in Christ. It's not the same. Uh, we can even go and read, read what the scripture says. The Bible says there's no one righteous, no, not one. Uh, so it, when Paul comes, he did not uh, confuse the righteousness Abraham had with the righteousness we receive in Christ. Now, uh, the righteousness that Abraham had, and let me explain that quickly. Uh, let, let me first say this. In the Old Testament, Noah was righteous. Abraham was righteous. There were many people seen as righteous in the Old Testament, yet Paul says there's no one righteous. So it can't be the same righteousness. Now, um, the righteousness, I believe, that the Bible talks about and Abraham's faith was accounted to him for righteousness was very simple. Righteousness according to the law was when you live according to the command that was given to you or what was expected from you, you know, then you were righteous according to that. And what, was, what God expected Abraham to do was to believe him. And when he believed him, it was accounted to him for righteousness. In other words, it says, by believing me, you've done the right thing. It was not the wrong thing to do to believe God. It was the right thing to do. When God says, I'm going to uh, make you as the stars and all those kind of things, you know, then, and, and he believed God, then because he believed, that was the right thing to do. It was accounted to him for righteousness. And when Paul talks about Abraham's righteousness and, the, you know, he even says that in the church we can also have that kind of a righteousness, which is... God says that I will make you immortal. God says that I have taken away your sin in Jesus Christ and all those kind of things. And when we believe it, then it is accounted to us for righteousness. That means it is we have done the right thing. Now, that's not the only righteousness that I believe the Bible talks about. The word righteousness, and especially if you study, the Afri you study in the Afrikaans language, it is the word gerechtigheid. Now, I haven't heard many other people preach this, but I'm just sharing my doctrine here. And I want you, when you listen to this doctrine and you listen to some of my messages, you'll understand what I mean. Otherwise, you're going to listen to some of the messages and uh, don't understand what I mean. Uh, you know, and if you don't understand what I mean, you can just use your definition of righteousness without understanding my definition of righteousness. There'll be a miscommunication and a misunderstanding. So I believe that there is a righteousness that, that is, the meaning is to have a right unto, gerechtigheid. In other words, you're at a place where you qualify. Now, Jesus Christ came and he ended the law because under the law, no man qualified to have um, a, 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 a belief in God wherein he can identify with God as his equal um, and then from there have a new birth. He had no right into the most holy place because of the disqualification that came through the law. So when Jesus came and he ended the uh, uh, Adam and he brought forth Christ, the resurrected Jesus, the right that Jesus has unto eternal life is the same right that we have. And thereby, I define all people as righteous or having the right to make use of eternal life. Then you get, uh, you know, where the Bible talks about he became sin that we all might be made the righteousness of God. Now that verse in uh, Galatians 5.21, oh, not Galatians, 2 Corinthians 5.21, I, I see it as he became sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. That made there talks about finding your origin or being made from or being generated from righteousness. 
so uh, the context is when we were under the law, we were made sin. And Jesus was made sin so that sin could die and all death could die, that we might be made. That talks about a futuristic thing. It talks about um, the right word there. I would actually use the word justification, where we would have a life born of righteousness and therefore see righteousness manifest in our lives. So there's the righteousness. This is just the way I see it. There's the righteousness that says um, that was the right thing to do, to believe God, for instance. It can be accounted to you for righteousness. Where under the law, you had to obey all the laws and then your obedience to the law was accounted to you for righteousness. Now your obedience to I mean, how do you obey a declaration? God declares you forgiven. How do you obey that? By just believing it. In that declaration, he declares that he will also, um, he has got the power to raise you from the dead and that he gives that as a hope for you. How do you obey that? By believing him. So when you believe upon and call upon the name, that is accounted to you as the right thing to do. The other form of righteousness is to have a right unto on account of what Christ has done, for he has ended the old man. Then I believe in uh, to be made the righteousness of God as having the, the right that God has in Christ to bring forth life manifest in you and therefore having life inside manifesting in your, in your, in your body. That's how I see um, righteousness.